right, Panthers, listen up. <laughs> Russell, big opening night of the Rodan project. I was thinking of a quote somewhere that I saw that it took Rodan 37 years to create the gates of hell that inspired you also for this piece. And I was thinking, did it take, does it take 37 years for the dancers to learn your material? It looks really difficult to, to grasp this material and they've done a real good job. Mm -hmm. I think there's, um, pat particularly in this piece, there's a kind of there's an evolving nature to um, to the work. Felt like the gates of hell was never completed until after Rodin's death. And uh, um, I mean, at the moment, with the with the amount of performances that we've done, we've always made changes before each show. So it's it's evolving as we go and I think that's um, that's important and maybe uh, and there's you know there's improvisational parts that we try and shape mm -hmm. um, so as we get to know what kind of happens in that terrain and we can keep feeding in instructions about how to how to work with it and exploring that um, it are changes. You, are you saying it's some sort of investigation still? Yeah, definitely. I got the feeling also that you want to move the audience with movement. I don't think there's particularly story or relationships with emotions, but it, I was personally moved by a section with two dancers up on the wall in the second mm -hmm. part, and that really moved me. And it was, I think, mainly because of the intimacy and the movement, the quality of the movement. Is, is that what you're aiming for? Um, I love it when movement moves us, and that is a that is a goal in in making something. But not the only goal. It's not the only goal, you know. There's um, it's it's it's, it's up there in the uh, priority list of you know the main things that you want to happen. I think. And what are other objectives? Um, clarity. Clarity of what exactly? Um, clarity of purpose, clarity of structure, um, clarity of dynamics and f flow, um, energy dynamics through the through the work. What also was uh, easy to see the difference between the first part and the second part. First was sort of neoclassicist. Yes. Uh, I almost thought of Frederick Ashton symphonic variations right. when the curtain opened. I thought. Royal Ballet, right. um, and then of course the second half was more urban, uh, yes. uh, if you would say so. Uh, what is your reason for the two, the, the difference? Um, well, there's kind of the journey kind of took us to a relationship with classicism that um, Rodin studied a lot, Michelangelo and antiquity, looking back at antiquity. So I felt that we also needed to go back looking in a way or um, remarking on antiquity. Um, so looking at more classicism, um, we were also looking at uh, the watercolours and that was, a, that was a part of that, but this kind of classicism and antiquity came into it. Um, and then another part, because we were going we were looking more at inspiration from the watercolours that took us into a canvas which led us to draping and then the draping of the costume led us to that kind of costume and to that costume kind of led us towards a certain language I see and why the the, the mountain if, if you want before and after the break um, you mean why the, the, the set yes. in that way? Yes. Initially, looking at the Rodin sculptures, you know, there's a lot of things where the um, as they're carved in rock, you know, maybe a, a leg is raised, but it's got a lot of weight. 
in it because it's still resting in rock. There's not a, there's not a sense that it's it's perched off the floor. There's a sense that it's grounded and heavy and physical, and um, you see gravity passing through it. And I I felt like we we, we have to have that. Um, and whether it's a a figure that's resting on their arm, you can't you can't. Um, you can't get that from just putting the arm there. It needs to be right. resting weight into it. So to have all of those different configuration possibilities, we needed to have different slanted surfaces. Um, Thank you. So after uh, the, the intermission, uh, the, the mountains, if you want, was still there. It was angular mm -hmm. pieces and the, all the movements are more round. Is there a reason specific? intention for that? It's a kind of different quality. Um, the, the one in the, in the draped watercolour first half, classic antique, antique kind of part, there's, there's this canvas draped over the set, which is incredibly difficult to walk on, on the set. So we ended up putting something soft on it and it changed the changed the way that they could move on the on that set. Uh, it allowed them to be able to walk up it, which on the canvas, on the sloping surfaces, they couldn't initially. Um, so there's something about that juxtaposition with them being on a soft angular surface and then being on a hard sculpted surface, but you've got the softness of the body. So those. Um, those juxtapositions were something that we were um, interested in seeing. Thank you. And uh, there was a lot of use of uh, strings. Did you have a particular connection with strings and your ideas for the piece? I mean, strings in the music? Sorry, yes. Um, when I started thinking about Rodin, one of the things that was most clear and strong, like, well, we, we need to get a sense of weight heaviness um, and initially I was thinking well, well we'll maybe we'll try and get that in the music so I heard a piece of I was looking at pieces of music that were written in the time of Rodin so I was looking at Meyerbeer and Massenet um, and Gluck was one of um, Rodin's favorite composers but uh, there was a piece of Massonet that I heard that was played on the double bass. And we kind of know the piece from the ballet Manon. Um, it's a, it's a well-known piece of music, but played on the double bass, it had this real sense of gravitas and weight. And I thought, okay, well, that, that can be my interpretation of... I could take that from a Rodin and you know it's not it's not trying to do a, a shape but it's trying to get weight it's thinking about weight um, so it led us to the um, it led us to the score and the, and the composer Alexander Zecchi and he, he, he played it on cello but it was it was um, quite a weighted sense in the cello so thank you so you could say to sum it up you mentioned, I think, you meant uh, Macmillan's Menon. Yes. The ballet, yes. the Royal Ballet, is still in you in some way. You use urban dancers now, but it, you can't get it out, I suppose. No, it's a, you know, it's a part of my um, training, it's part of my upbringing, so I don't try and... I'm past the point of trying to not have it, not own it. It's a part of me, and I think, you know, yeah, it always will be, so try and um, it's a reference point you know All right. um, it informs something so I use well, it we look forward to seeing you again thank you thank you right panzers listen up